in this lecture we will study about edit point we will figure out the location of the edit point in the stress and strain diagram and we will also study the reasons behind the occurrence of the edit point if we have to define edit point then it is a point in the stress and strain diagram beyond which the material transforms itself from the elastic region to the plastic region means beyond edit point permanent deformation in the material starts so as you can see this figure a here this is the stress and strain diagram for the mild steel so we will not discuss here all the points in the stress and strain diagram this has already been discussed in a separate video so mild steel is a material which shows distinctly the upper edit point and lower edit point is it also has the edit point elongation so other materials likewise titanium aluminium copper these uh, materials do not show the edit point separately so we have to figure out the edit point in them so here you can see this circle this circle marks the points showing the upper and the lower edit point so here we can easily figure out the edit point by this hump and the lower edit point can be figured out the lower in the stress value after the upper edit point so here you can see up to the edit point we have elastic strain and beyond edit point up to this fracture of the component we have plastic strain plastic strain means permanent deformation but most of the materials do not show this type of curve which mild steel shows we have a typical curve here shown in the figure b which you will observe for the most of the ductile material so here you can see that you do not have the yield point so you have to find out the yield point why we are worrying about the yield point so much because this is the point beyond which the permanent deformation starts and during designing of the components we do not want permanent deformation in our component we always want that stress should be below the uh, stress should be within the elastic limit so uh, for finding out the stresses below the elastic limit or to figure out the working stress safe working stresses we have to find out the yield point so materials which do not show the yield point we have to use the offset method in this method what we will do we will calculate the total strain up to the fracture and we have to calculate the 0.2% of total strain and we have to mark the total strain 0.2% of total strain from the origin and we have to draw a line parallel to the elastic limit and a line parallel to the elastic limit from the 0.02% of total strain wherever it cuts the stress and strain diagram that will be the yield point and that also known as the offset yield strength or proof stress so this method is known as the offset method or proof stress method and the ratio of the stress and strain within elastic limit is known as the modulus of elasticity so as we are discussing about the permanent deformation or plastic deformation so how does this plastic deformation occur this occurs due to the movement of the dislocations and how does dislocations occur it is uh, it occurs due to the slipping of atoms on the slip planes in the slip direction so for a quick recap of the dislocations we have studied the edge dislocation and screw dislocation so edge dislocations have extra half plane of atom as you can see from here so this extra half plane of atom whenever is present in the material it it is known as the edge dislocation and when you will apply shear stresses on it so if you apply force in this direction and in this direction what will happen this dislocation will move from this uh, left side to the right side and whenever it moves completely out from this uh, lattice it will create the plastic deformation so this is the 3d view of this edge dislocation which is present here another type of dislocation is this screw dislocation here you can see the upper half of this uh, cube has been slip has been moved or it has been slipped with respect to the lower half and if you will plot or if you will see from the top view the 
location of the atoms then you can trace out a helical path and which is similar you know, to the how which is similar to the screw that how a screw looks like so that is why it is known as the screw dislocations so during the movement during the moment of these dislocations the plastic deformation occurs and at the yield point also these dislocations plays a important role so why does this yield point occur this is the main question here so if we will consider the edge dislocation present in a lattice so here this diagram shows that there is edge dislocation which is shown by this orange colors atoms so when this edge dislocation is stopped from moving further within the lattice then this is known as the pinning of the dislocation so why does it occur it occurs due to the some impurity atoms which are present inside the material so yield point this upper yield point occurs only upper yield point and lower yield point occurs only in the case of mild steel so the scientist name a h cottrell and b a bilby in 1949 introduced a concept of cottrell atmosphere so they connected this atmosphere with the interstitial and substitutional impurities so we know that there are impurities present in the um, metals so if we consider the case of mild steel so mild steel contains iron as well as the carbon which is present as an interstitial impurity so whenever there is a edge dislocation inside the mild steel so this edge dislocation due to this ha extra half plane there is some widened zones which are produced below these dislocations and these widened zones are energetically favorable for the interstitial impurities so means carbon atoms can easily come below these edge dislocations and they will form atmosphere which is known as the quarter atmosphere and due to the electrostatic interaction between these interstitial atoms which are shown by these blue colors and this edge dislocation these interstitial atoms will not allow the movement of the dislocation and the pinning of the dislocation occurs and so you need higher stress value to in order to move this dislocation which is shown by this peak here as you can see this portion so the upper yield point is shown here which occurs due to the pinning of the dislocations and when you apply sufficient stress then what happens that this dislocation gets suddenly free from these interstitial impurities that is why the stress required for further movement of the dislocation decreases and which is shown by the lower yield point so means up the stresses at the lower yield point decreases and after that the strain can be produced at a nearly constant value of stress which is known as the yield point elongation so in case of mild steel or in case of steel if you will see the carbon and nitrogen atoms generally plays the role of the interstitial impurities whereas the quarter atmosphere created by the nitrogen atoms plays a greater and significant role because it has more solubility and a diffusivity in steel so this quarter atmosphere is created for a specific percentage of carbon atoms in this steel so likewise this upper yield point and lower yield point is found only in the case of mild steel whereas it is absent in the case of high carbon steel however in one of the uh, reported uh, in one of the study it has been found that if you can remove these interstitial impurities by some method completely likewise if you use wet hydrogen treatment for the complete removal of carbon and nitrogen atoms then you can uh, remove the formation of the yield point in the stress and strain diagrams so the catch here is that pinning of the dislocation due to the interstitial impurity atoms present in the material is the reason for the formation of the this yield point and which marks the presence of the upper yield point and after you have applied a sufficient amount of stress this this strain produces at a, at a much lower value of stress which is known as the lower yield point so this was all about the yield point phenomena thank you